Hello and welcome to Gitterk Farms. We're back with another episode of the Clark Farms map by MRG Mapping. And uh, last time we finished cutting this uh, big field of grass up here. If I turn grass on on the mini map, uh, we were up here cutting uh, the grass and we're hoping that dries into hay here. And in fact, if we just run out here real quick and check on it, we advance time one day. And so um, we're really hoping that uh, this grass dries out over the next uh, few hours here. And it looks like everything actually grew a little bit. Um, but you can see here still, it's not the dry hay texture yet. Um, so this grass is still growing and it looks like more grass came up behind it already. Um, which is cool, I guess. It means we will most likely be able to get a second cut out of this grass at some point later in the year here. Um, but for right now, we're really hoping that that grass dries out some more today uh, because we've got a few hours left of drying potential here, and then it's going to start raining this afternoon. And so if it starts raining, we're going to start losing grass, which will be unfortunate because it'll mean all that mowing was for nothing, and so we might get out here and try and bail it up if it starts to rain and just get some grass bales uh, and use those to feed our cows. Um, and so before I just advance time, I wanted to check on our other fields, which it looks like our soybeans have come up in uh, this field. And so I'm suspicious expecting that they're up on the field across here as well, which they are. And then that means uh, across the way here, our corn is also growing. So if we jump out over here, this is our corn field. And it looks like the corn has all come up as well. Um, so what that means is we're actually good to go ahead and uh, hire the co-op to come out and do some spraying for us. And so I think what we're going to do is go ahead and get the fertilizer um, sprayed onto these crops that we need. If we look at the soil composition here, uh, both of these fields need a pass of fertilizer and then they also need uh, some herbicide. And so we're gonna go ahead and um, call the co-op and get them to come out here with their sprayer and do some spraying and we might just uh, ride along uh, with that for a little bit of fun. So we're up here at the uh, shop area on the map or the, I guess the bulk buy area on the map. And we've got this uh, Patriot the from the co-op uh, and we're picking out our chemical that we're gonna put on uh, the fields here. And so this is costing us a pretty penny to fill up um, we are going to fill this all the way up and see how far it gets us. $7,000 uh, for chemical. And we're going to be riding along here and heading over to our field and getting some stuff sprayed. I don't know how far this chemical is going to go. Uh, we're hoping we can get it done in a uh, single pass here. Or not a single pass, but rather a uh, single fill on the uh, sprayer here. We don't have that many, uh, that much land to spray, and so we're we're really hoping that uh, this is going to work out. Otherwise, we'll uh, have to have the co-op send out a truck to refill. And this uh, traffic is a mite slow. For a 55 speed limit road, these guys are uh, definitely not in a hurry to get anywhere. It's okay, our field is uh, just past this uh, farm setup here, this barn. So we'll be able to pull in, I think, uh, off of this gravel road that's sitting up here and uh, get into the field without having to follow these cars all the way up to our farm right on this guy's bumper apparently. So yeah, I think we'll just turn in here and uh, go ahead and get into our field approach. Get all unfolded here. 
I'm not sure I've actually gotten around to using this sprayer. I've had it for a while, um, but I've just never really had an opportunity to do a whole lot of spraying with it. Um, it's ginormous, which is awesome. It's uh, on par with like the John Deere 4045, something like that. Um, trying to decide what the best way to actually spray this field is going to be. I think we're going to do up and down rows. Um, so that we're staying in the, the row here. We're kind of driving all over our crops at the moment. So after a little bit of finicking around with the sprayer settings, we've got uh, GPS all set up and working here. And so we're going to go ahead and set up a track and see about doing this field going up and down the long way rows here. The longish rows, I suppose I should say. And I have just come to the realization that I'm breaking my own rule, which is to never use a sprayer without uh, sprayer section control again. Um, I'm not sure if there's an updated version of the sprayer that has a uh, section control on it. Um, that is something I need to look into in the future uh, because I am a huge fan of the sprayer section control mod. So yeah, without sprayer section control, we're going to be wasting a fair amount of product here, I think, on the end rows and with our turning around and stuff like that. So definitely something to think about uh, for the future. You would think that the co-op would have uh, more sophisticated machinery, but I guess we can't complain since we don't even have any of this machinery ourselves. And uh, we'll just count this towards uh, some of the cost involved in running the sprayer. Um, and so, since the mod didn't have uh, sprayers or didn't have GPS on it, I just had to spend fifteen thousand dollars to add GPS to this sprayer. And so, we're gonna call that our worker fee here for um, doing our sprayer spraying uh, this season and then uh, next season we'll maybe figure out a fairer way to do this in the future. $15,000 in labor costs for one season seemed like uh, a fair trade-off to get things going for sure. And so this is a huge field but with such a big sprayer we're definitely making short work of it. Um, I'm trying to think about the best way to tackle this. We've got this low spot in the field here, so I probably need to lift up my boom. Oh my goodness, we're wasting so much spray. I'm trying to... The boom arms move independently. How confusing. I mean, probably pretty realistic, but um, I've not uh, done that before, so I'm just trying to put them back to a more or less centered location. We're driving all over our beans here. It's just terrible. Um, I think what we're going to do is actually take a headland pass off here. Normally I would want to leave this to the end and not drive over so much product when we're turning around, but uh, given the farm sim mechanics and uh, my inability to drive, I think I'm going to forego a reality a little bit here uh, to make my life easier. I'm trying to play with these boom arms just a little bit as we're driving here. With this hilly terrain, this is actually going to come in pretty handy, I think. Um, I've never driven a large uh, self-propelled sprayer like this, um, and for that reason right there, I probably would have put it into a fence. Um, we had a pull-behind sprayer that was significantly smaller than this when I was uh, farming. And so we're trying our best here to control this a giant machine. Let's jump in cab for a minute. Oh, that's a little annoying. I can't see the end spouts. So we're going to, whoops, go back out of cab so I can actually see where I'm driving. 
And this is the one thing I really need to try out that real cab view uh, mod so that when I turn to look out the window, I lean a little bit. I think it's going to help with some of those visuals. But in the meantime, we're going to make do with uh, what we're used to here. Try not to put too much chemical off the edge of the field here. We don't need that uh, lagoon filling up with uh, liquid chemicals. In fact, I'm not even sure what that uh, is. Boom. Okay, we've almost put it into the bin as well. We are just not off to a good start in today's episode. We're all over the place with this sprayer. It's uh, apparently been a while since I've used larger equipment. That's going to be my excuse for today, at least. Um, it's not that I'm a terrible driver. It's that I'm just a little bit out of practice with larger scale equipment. We've been running uh, two series side by side with some smaller equipment. So um, this is uh, uh, nice to mix it up a little bit. But uh, yeah, if any of these people driving by us from the co-op, they're, they're definitely not going to lease me a sprayer again in the future if uh, they catch me driving it like this. I realize uh, in reality, most of the time, they probably wouldn't be leasing me the actual machine. Um, they'd probably be sending somebody out to do the work for me. I'm um, trying to figure out where we left off on our long rows. Oh, here we go. But uh, this is farm sim, and I can't imagine leaving a hired worker to do this job. And uh, I also think course play might struggle a little bit with a implement this size uh, with the islands. And so it's probably best if we just do this work on our own. And I'm always amused with myself for wearing my John Deere cap inside my Case IH uh, series here. One of these days I may have to swap that out and get myself an actual red hat of some kind. I'm sure they have them. Let's see here. That was not the button to turn off the uh, sprayer. And that was not the button to turn it back on. We seem to uh, be having some trouble with the controls in this uh, newer equipment here. Should have read the user manual. So with that, I'm going to uh, finish up spraying uh, these two fields with uh, liquid fertilizer. And then we're going to go check on our uh, grass and see how we're doing with drying our grass. Trying to make up your mind like you need more time. You already spent most of mine. Even when your words fail, you try to keep it light. You realize I'm done right. You can be honest. I don't appreciate your life. It's about damn time you get it right I'm up on my
Something I just noticed while going through the time lapse here is that our um, fill level and a bunch of other stats are on the monitors here uh, in the cab. And so let me get turned around here real quick and I want to talk about that for a second. Uh, but of course I can't drive in cab with uh, such a large implement. It's a little too hard to see where I've sprayed and not. So we're gonna get going here on our track again and jump back into the in-cab mode. And if I, well, I'll leave the HUD on actually. Um, most of them are in, well, all of them are in uh, kilometers an hour and liters, the metric versions. Uh, they don't change with uh, some of the mods that I've got installed, like Unit Convert doesn't know how to change the in-cab monitors, uh, but it's pretty cool to see, uh, you know, our fill level and liters. You know, this is a 6,000 level, uh, 6,000 liter spray tank, and we're at 3,700 and some liters out of that capacity. Uh, and you can see that on the bottom monitor there. Um, let's get turned around here. And then, uh, you know, obviously our speed and fuel and stuff is in the... Uh, notification area there on the bar and then um, you can see that green light with the C that just came on that's my cruise control indicator that I've turned on the cruise control and so for me these are really awesome details uh, that modders put into mods and it really has made me realize I probably need to spend a little bit more time in cab in some of these uh, mods that I'm playing with uh, because this is an awesome level of detail that uh, I'd never noticed before. I mean, I think I first noticed it in the JHHG version of the S790. Um, it was really cool to see uh, some of the things that were added to the monitors there. Uh, and this kind of falls into that category for me now. So I'm super excited to be seeing uh, some of these details in these mods that I've been hanging on to for a while now. And never realized how much uh, how much awesomeness was going on here. So with that, I think we've hit everything on this field. So if we bring up the map here, these fields are both fully fertilized. This one has one more stage to go that we'll be able to pick up later. And uh, then we do need to spray all these for weeds at some point. I think we can come back and do that in a little bit. I really want to... Uh, at least get to a point where we know if uh, our grass is going to turn into hay or if we're going to need to be figuring out what to do once it starts raining. And so I think my goal here is going to be to take this back up by our shop, dump the chemical out of it, and then drive it back over to the co-op. And then we'll go check on the grass. So we're just gonna leave those uh, two containers of fertilizer right here. I'll run this back up to the co-op and we'll check back in in a moment. So we've advanced time a bit, trying to get to a point where uh, the grass would dry into hay and be ready to be baled up. But it looks like the moisture level is still at about 12% which if I'm not mistaken, it needs to get under 10% uh, before it's considered dry. And so we're not quite there yet. Um, yeah, I don't know what we're gonna do. 
because we've got, as you can see in the forecast, the rain is imminent here, which means it'll probably start in the next hour. And if I look at the weather forecast, it's going to rain for the rest of the day throughout the night and then not really be drying much tomorrow and then continuing to rain into the evening tomorrow and Tuesday. And so we're really going to uh, have some bad times here with this rain. And so I'm not sure what we're going to do. A couple of days of rain is really going to deteriorate this grass. We can always come back out and tet it and get it drying again after the rain. Or we can bale it as grass and um, just use that to get our cows started. Um, I haven't really decided yet. We need to figure that out, though, and uh, do that here before the rain starts in the next hour. So with that, I think we're going to wrap up today's episode and uh, I'll look for uh, your comments and suggestions and we'll see what we want to do with this field next episode. That's all for today. Kedrick, out. <laughs>